Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. I attended Drake this year at the Forum in Los Angeles and saw one of the best concerts of my life using SeatGeek. Artists like Travis Scott, Bad Bunny, Noah Khan, the Jonas Brothers are all on tour, and you don't want to miss out. SeatGeek puts all of the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you are getting a good deal. And the canceled viewers know I came through for you guys. Use my code TANA for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code TANA. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Today's episode is sponsored by Lumi. I use Lumi everywhere I go because it keeps me smelling good with or without a shower. Picture this, I've just finished my Thanksgiving dinner and the meat sweats are starting, but instead of racing to reapply deodorant, I'm cool as a cucumber. Why? Because I use Lumi. Special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with our exclusive code. Use code canceled at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Thank you for sponsoring today's podcast, Lumi, and you guys will hear more about it later in the episode. Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome back, back to, to the, the Canceled, Canceled podcast. podcast. I always sound like a man, but like m- the rasp level of my voice right now is actually scary. You know, I used to like literally try to hurt myself. I used to try to scratch my throat with what? things so that... <laughs> I really am dead serious so that I would have a um, raspy voice because I love them so much. That is the most Brooke coded sentiment I've ever heard. Because Brooke Davis on One Tree Hill has a raspy voice and I wanted to be her so bad. I also used to stick a pen in my cheek to try to get a dimple. (laughs) There's absolutely no way. And there's evidence to support it working. I just personally, it didn't work for me. There's evidence to support it. No, don't take my word for that. Do not stick a pen in your cheek. But I also, I was just an idiot. You know, I used to lay, this is a true story. I used to lay on my bed under my light bulb, just naked, thinking I was going to get a tan. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) Do you remember back in the day on the canceled podcast Mm. when you said that you used a magic eraser to take off your spray tans? Yeah. And then Lauren Gray did it and got a chemical burn. She got chemical burns. Yeah. That's why we never, ever, ever refer to the canceled podcast for any sort of actual advice. At all. Seriously. It's actually terrifying. It Let really it be is. known. I'm like, disclaimer right now, nothing we say is to be taken seriously. At all. Oh my God. Hi. Hello. How are you? I am better than ever, Tana Marie. How are you? Weirdly also better than ever, but we can unpack that. <laughs> we can unpack. I, I know I don't look it. I'm not giving it. I know, you look amazing. <laughs> Definitely not giving it. Reddit thinks I'm on meth. The whole thing. I heard about that through the grapevine because you know I've, I've banned myself from Reddit. Lila, you, you should get you should read up on it. <laughs> Lila give me comes into my room and goes, "Reddit thinks you're on meth." I go, "Good morning." Your TikToks were kind of giving meth. Yeah, they were. I was just drunk as hell at Friendsgiving, but every Friendsgiving is so drunk and like not wholesome. Like think about the Bryce year. Oh yeah. Like everyone I was involved just, in a physical altercation. We always say Friendsgiving, but we should really just say like purgatory yeah. with with some stuffing. <laughs> like Yeah. I've never once eaten at Friendsgiving. Like I'm always way too drunk by the time. Well, your the green food bean comes. casserole looked delicious. <laughs> Dropped it on the floor. <laughs> started sobbing. Had to remake it. Didn't eat it. No one ate it. Oh. Well, it looks good. Well, actually people ate it, but I didn't, so it, you know. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Cr- well, just landing from a flight too, and then like landing from a flight and then making a casserole is just like the weirdest set of two actions. Those are two ver- like really normal things to do. I guess it just didn't feel <laughs> that way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you came back from Hawaii. What was what was the deal there? You said you were going to Hawaii. I know there's a, there's differing opinions on why you went to Hawaii. One of them is correct, and one of them is your version. Wow. It's like Taylor's version. <laughs> Hawaii, so what's, what's, Tana's version. Yeah, Hawaii. Would, tell me about Hawaii, Tana's version. I feel like I went there for some answers. Some, you know, okay. to questions that just stay up here in my little walnut brain. Mm-hmm. And I got, I got some answers. Okay. And I had an amazing time. I met the love of my life. I'm actually not kidding. I think I met my husband. He's downstairs. I don't want to sound corny, but like when you know, you know. Is that weird? Yeah. Like, no, it's not. It's not. But in my entire life, I felt this way meeting someone about like two people. 
ever actually. It's who not some Tana shit. I Me, will not so say who they were, but you know who they are. I wonder, I'm trying to think if I've ever had a moment like that. I don't think I have where I meet someone and I'm like, oh, this is my guy. Because never. I have this list of like what I want in someone's personality, you know? Give it to me. Funny. Smart. Like smart enough to be funny in a smart way. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You really can't be that funny if you're not smart or I'm laughing at you. Exactly. And that's just the worst thing in the world. Like, <sighs> passion for life passion for something like you know what i mean happy honest to god like someone who's just happy and treats me happily i woke up the other day to him being like good morning princess like how did you sleep like what can i get you do you need any water do you need anything and i was actually like transcending to parts of my life where i'd wake up and chris would be like my uber's already outside i want to leave like you know Aww, poor chris he just gets it every time i, I know because it, it's such a catalyst of so many things in my head and someone tweeted me that the other day they were like i wish tana understood that like no one knows anything about chris miles and i'm like yes but like but he's, he's a character such a, he's because he's such a major character in our lives yeah exactly like i'm not yeah whatever um so i go to hawaii and i feel like i really wanted to see if i feel like there's more out there away from la well i feel like yes in hawaii there's definitely more out there in hawaii yes but like actually feeling that you know what i mean yeah. like not like, could I live a different life somewhere else as a different person? And, like, yeah. would I be happy? And is that what I need, you know? And, yes, it is. Definitely learned that. Okay. Do you think L.A. is the problem? I think what L.A. has done to me is the problem. What about what you've done to L.A.? <laughs> <laughs> so real. So real. Like, we've, it's, it's like a... I'm it's like, shit. Like, I'm having a healthy breakup with L.A. Like, we, we are better apart no i get what you're saying though you know when you like even if i go to like arizona for a while i i a lot of times i go home and i'm like i want to stay yeah because it's just people are i, mean, I love we, LA, we talked about this so much on the i know they're over episode, us so. saying it like oh la sucks yeah like it, it doesn't no, suck it's no. an amazing place to live it's but. yeah it's just the realm of people that we are surrounded that in. we are choosing to surround yeah ourselves exactly with. exactly yes but knowing that there are normal people out there who have normal ideations of everything is awesome mm -hmm. you know not that i'm necessarily normal but it's nice to be refreshed it sucks that. kind of too because not that you don't have like normal friends from home but vegas is so similar to la in that it's like you know just uh, yeah i'm terrified a to million go there miles for an hour like yeah you can't go there and just like separate like i i can go home and it's very like slow paced it's fun yeah like no and like a wholesome way it's the same city just in a desert you know and that's arguably worse in my opinion Pro arguably worse <laughs> like 100 percent. it was just being around all the hawaiians was so interesting because everyone just wakes up every day in hawaii and they just think to themselves what do i want to do that's going to make me happy like yeah that's it like well that's it's like easy to do in hawaii you can wake up and be like Yes. I could go to the beach. I could eat a coconut. Just living a lifestyle where it's like, I'm going to be happy all day and I'm going to fit what I like have to do into that, you know? Whereas I feel like here it's like, I'm going to do what I have to do and I'm going to try to fit happiness into that. You know what confuses me a little? You always say that you're, you're, you're not depressed and you've never been depressed, but you kind of sound depressed. I'm so fucking depressed. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause, because I have always felt that way until like now I'm medicated. So now I like, I really am happy all day. Yeah. Mostly. I know it doesn't seem that way, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I am like, I'm, you know what I mean? I feel like that could be something to explore, not diagnosing you or anything. No, 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 no. I realized like you're depressed. When I said that to you, like on the last episode, like I, I came to that realization probably like a month ago. I was like, damn, I'm, I'm depressed. Yeah. And I know why now, you know, like I feel like I've, been depressed before but it's like i didn't know why i wasn't acknowledging that there's I was not just, even always a reason most yeah of the time but 100 percent, i know what's like depressing me and like what i like i made a list i really i wrote out every single thing in hawaii of like what i have to do to become happy and whole again and well that's good i know that. that's your first step and that's good my first step spend a little less time here okay you know well that's and realistic yeah it is i know nice, but though. i get what you're saying though like i've I was literally just in Cleveland, which was like the most random place to be, but like walking around and seeing just everyone like regular, normal people going to jobs and like, it's cool. Even in New York, I had this like weird out of body realization when I was there. I was just like sitting people watching like at a restaurant and I was like every single person who's like walking by me 
is like so different, like dressed so different, like doing whatever the fuck they are doing for themselves, walking to work, like biking, walk, whatever. Just like, and everyone here is like constantly putting on a show. Like you sit down at a cafe. It's performative. And it's, exactly. Like, and that's the worst thing about LA. It feels like everyone's performing. I just saw a TikTok of somebody who like is just ma making an absolute scene in the street and you notice just everybody, no one even looks at you in New York because everybody's just minding their own business. Everybody's so like living their life on what them. they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Which like cool. you and I could go to a cafe right now and we would just see a hundred people who look exactly the same. Well, you performing. have to think about like when I go out here, if I go shopping or if I go to eat or anything, I always just expect that I'm going to either see someone I know or somebody who knows me. Mm -hmm. Like, not not that, like... Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. I, you know, it's like I have to, like, dress a certain way and stuff just to feel, like, safe. Exactly. And then in every other city, you just see normal fucking people being fucking Well, yeah, normal. I was just dicking around in the park the whole fucking time in Cleveland. Like, that's awesome. so much fun. That's awesome. And you're not thinking about how do I look dicking around in the park? At how all. am I being perceived dicking around in the park? Don't care. I was you're lime just scootering by myself again. <laughs> Please don't die on the lime scooter. I can't lose don't you like that. Listen, I want it to go fast. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I'm happy you got a little bit of what you were looking for. It looked like you had a lot of I fun. Also, you came back with a boyfriend. He's here. Listen to this story, actually. Like, it's actually the cutest story in the world. Well, okay. it's not, but it's Tana coated cute, okay? Um, boyfriend's name is. Okay. There's other. Straight up. Oh no, I'm I'm never gonna disrespect him. I have no I have no worry, <laughs> okay. which is huge for me. That's that's how you know. Um, other mm -hmm. who we've known forever. He kind of got brought into the friend group by Trevi and had a little situation with Amari and lived in Sherman Oaks with us essentially for two years. And he moved back to Hawaii. Such a fun time. Such a fucking fun. And time. he's like Hawaii, like like royalty. Yeah. So his dad is famous surfer the king of pipeline Derek Ho and so he's the president of Hawaii it was I need to actually tell you some hilarious was he the president of Hawaii I thought he was no no was the president oh. of Hawaii because he I was, was like I thought he was the... just a really amazing surfer <laughs> <laughs> no it's just the way that everyone on that island like respects and idolizes his dad like has created mm -hmm. this life for him where he's like famous as fuck there essentially mm -hmm. you know I have to tell you some hilarious anecdotes actually about Hawaii like it, it it was unlike anything I've ever seen in my life um but I get to Hawaii and every time I get there I always text and Amber because they're you know kind of my piece of LA friends who live there and right they show you the island and you get to do things the local way and that's like awesome and amazing and mm -hmm. I'm like beyond grateful for them anyways we sit down at dinner it's my first night in Hawaii um I was there he's drunk as hell I'm sitting in a wooden chair, right? Mm. And it's like all of us. Amber's boyfriend is besties with my husband. So, Perfect. So they're there. Yeah, it was so cute. We were like double dating all around the island, like being so adorable the entire time. I can't. Ugh. So I'm just meeting them. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, hi, hi guys. Like we smoke a joint and then we go to dinner. So I'm just meeting the boys. But so is at dinner and he's drunk as fuck. And I'm sitting in this wooden chair and he decides he wants to make it a rocking chair. It's not a rocking chair. Mm. It's a stable chair on DIY. four legs. You know? Yep. Comes and gets in the chair like behind me and is trying to like rock us back and forth. And I'm <laughs> I'm yelling at him. I'm screaming like, stop, <laughs> this is going to end horribly. Like, get the fuck off me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I put my foot down on the ground. The leg stabs through my big toe. <laughs> Blood everywhere. I'm looking at the beautiful Waikiki beach. I'm gushing blood. I start immediately sobbing. It's the worst type of like, pain. Like scream crying. You like, get used to it though, trust me. Yeah, apparently this is a whole thing that I didn't like. It is and it's very about. common and I think I've spoken about this on the podcast before but I do not have either of my big toenails. <laughs> my nail girl was giving me a pedicure covering. I don't. My toe is completely blue. My toe is cerulean. <laughs> That's the beginning. It's going to fall off. She looks me dead in the face and she goes, for sure your toenail's gonna fall off. And you just don't I, understand how hard it is to grow a new toenail. Oh my God, oh my God. I've never had anything I, like it this It happened happen to me, same same situation, blunt force trauma, okay? <laughs> Two separate frat parties. 
All right. <laughs> Notice I said frat parties. I haven't been in college in fucking eight years. Please don't look me in the face right now and tell me you still have issues I have with to the toenails. Glue the, I, they, it doesn't grow. Like my toenails won't grow like longer than the tiniest little bit. So I have to glue like a fake toenail on to them. That's what Shirley To make it a normal size toenail. I'm going to need like an acrylic nail well, tip. Well, your sweet assistant has the same situation going on right now. It's very common. I never knew this no would be a part of my No toenails, no problem. I never knew this would be a part of my journey. I did. I, I saw it coming from you, seriously. Wow, that's actually the most <laughs> horrible thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> it's um, so crazy, though. Honestly, because because it happened to me two separate times, and it's like I realize it's so easy, and it amazes me that anybody has a real toenail. It's so I'm easy for it to I'm holding my breath, happen. but weirdly, that did make me feel a little better. No, it's I don't, no, but I I'm don't understand it, and it's like, it's just they grow in a certain way. It like doesn't attach anymore. Like really, please stop. Okay, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> Enough. I'm gonna have to actually just like like I have to take it day by day. But if I, you are a podiatrist, literally give me a call. <laughs> no podiatrist probably watch canceled. But I was I really, just gonna like, say you know there's one podiatrist. I just want to know my next steps though. because I can't live that way forever. What if I'm ever like stranded on a desert please island stop. and I can't find k- kiss press on toe <laughs> nails? Please, please, please. Stop. <laughs> He's fucking stuck. This is why no one will date me. Toenails gushing blood. I'm screaming, sobbing. I meet this man. I've known him for 15 minutes. He goes and gets a cup of ice water and he's shoving my toe into the ice. Goes and gets me Tylenol. Is sitting there talking to me being like, I've never met a cuter girl with a broken tail. Broken tail. Broken (laughs) toenail. (laughs) Here's what I have to say. I know I wasn't cute. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, I was actually a literal mess. And to, like, meet that way and, like, have someone, like, t- spends the next two days carrying me around. I couldn't walk. Like, just carrying That's me all around sweet. the island, being like, where do you want to go? Where can I carry you to? Like, happy to do it. And I was like. Yeah, no one's carrying me anywhere. If you like me with no toenail, you're going to be pleasantly surprised when I not only have a blowout, but I'm not sobbing. Yeah. And I'm, like, it was just great to, like. Meet someone at like objectively my worst look, and okay. then like yeah, you it's for only you. up from here, you know. Yeah, like my hair is fucking disgusting. I'm pale as hell. I'm covered in bruises now from toe gate. Wait, was this the night that you had your slicked back bun? <laughs> no, and do you know what's funny is I looked better with that slicked back bun. No, it really. Than I did it, at, the during slick back bun really got me. No, but like how that, that's what I, that, imagine how ugly I was. I looked better with the bun that you're talking about than I did. Well, you looked amazing. Moment. I'm not. I'm not. But I don't slick back my hair like the, it's tapins, and I just put <laughs> conditioner until something. I remember happens. I have a video of you doing it on a jet one time, and I was like, oh. You asked me for um, if I had any product to use, and you used <laughs> body lotion to slick it back. When my hair gets to that weird point, I swear to God, it's like, give me ranch. Like, I'll use <laughs> ranch as mousse. Like, it just gets to a point where it's like, I just don't give a shit and there's no fixing it, you know? I, yeah, I get that. Well, it looks know. great right now. I need to read you a real text from this man. Would live through toe and roach gate again any day, baby. Bed felt empty last night. Less laughs and less loving on you. Hope you're basking in the sunshine and taking care of yourself today. We'll be daydreaming about choking you. Sorry for the last part. <laughs> However, I couldn't write a better text. Yeah, that's a very Tana coded. That's like, like pretty, using pretty... toe gate, like using my lingo. Yeah, it was all around a really great text. Question, and I'm not being negative. Is this love bombing? Can he hear me? <laughs> I'm, I, I, ha- I just have to be careful these days because I'm a victim. I know. And so do I. And we actually had like several conversations about that. So that's But like, I also you know, like, I always say this. I just, sometimes you really just do feel that way. And even if he is love bombing me, I can't take away like my connection to him. I've never had like better, deeper conversations. Like I've never like. It, oh, you also didn't meet in a situation where it's like, oh, you can go on one date, wait a week and go on another date. It's kind of yeah. like you, you just were there and then you had to obviously bring him home. Absolutely. Spent, we spent five days together. He doesn't live on that island, first of all. Oh. So he flies home to Maui, where he lives. And I'm like, I miss you. Like, please come back. Like, I can't actually live another day of my life without you. Flies back from Maui. Like, surprises me. Like, flies back. Goes home, does work. Comes back. I get here. Same thing. I'm like, I can't. I can't live without you. I don't know what to do. We'll That's see what a, happens. Well, you know what? I have high hopes for this situation. I love to see you with any man who, you know... Has promise. And he has promise for sure. 
Very tall, very good looking. I'm so in love. It's actually terrifying me. Yay. We in love? love? No, not literally. Oh. But like I want to say it. You know, you know when that is? Like when you like someone so much. And yeah. It's like, I always feel that way though. And it always gets me in trouble. <laughs> I, I think the problem is, is I never feel that way. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. No. I usually <laughs> hate whoever I'm talking to. Oh. And I'm usually I kinda- like... Ter- <laughs> I'm sorry. Aaron knows that. I'm always telling Aaron how much I hate whatever man I'm with. And I'm always putting out like a, a bullet point list of like why this person would be good for me, but I don't feel like yeah, I'm trying I guess to make if myself I, feel. I just usually like won't even keep him around if I feel that way. Like any guy who I am keeping around, I like really like probably. That's not you true. You just lied. I know. Yeah, no, sometimes I just say things about myself that aren't true. <laughs> I don't know, though, because, like, I, well, if you think about it, all the guys you can think of, I probably really liked them. Is, like, is love bombing deliberate? Like, yeah. Do you hap- like- usually. It, like, the, it, sometimes it can just, like, happen, but usually it's, like, a narcissist's, like, mm-hmm. strategy to reel you in before they start just being horrible. Okay. Yeah. So there's a difference between really liking someone. It's like, yeah. Sometimes yeah. you really do yeah, just like somebody that much. Like, doing things to almost manipulate someone into thinking you know that yeah 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 i had one of they those. like you as i'm staring at a mod sun piano it's like you cussed me out that night I, uh, oh <laughs> like, okay people, i understand now you know okay yeah anytime i've ever been like horribly love bombed like it affected me you know what i mean but if I there's love a little getting bit love bombed, though, like there's just nothing like it and i hate <laughs> it just is like such a shitty feeling after you have been love bombed to all of a sudden not be love bombed because you're like oh this man hates me like oh you can go a week without seeing me you hate me it Actually, it does fuck you up for life. I agree with that completely. Like getting love bombed heavily and then experiencing Yeah, and something also normal. so many times in a row. I feel like I've had so many like, but it's because I always attract like low-key like narcissists. Or narcissist like, or narcissist, narcissist adjacent. But Don't, I am not a narcissist. You always call me that. Narcissist would deny I'm it. not. <laughs> I am not a narcissist. What? I'm... <laughs> I'm not. Anyway, I'm not um, gonna let's talk about me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Picture this. I've just finished my Thanksgiving dinner and the meat sweats are starting. But instead of racing to reapply deodorant, I'm cool as a cucumber. Why? Because I use Lumi. Lumi is a one of a kind whole body deodorant. It was created by an OBGYN who discovered odor isn't just an underarm thing, it's an all over thing. So she developed a pH optimized deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor everywhere for up to 72 hours, even through the world's worst meat sweats. Special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with our exclusive code. Use code canceled at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. I love Lumi because I take it everywhere and it keeps me smelling right no matter what I'm doing. Whole body deodorant. Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Pits, under boobs, thigh folds, belly buttons, butt cracks, and vulvas. Created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. How? Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-odorant. Baking soda free and paraben free pH balance for safe use below the belt. Clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. 12 hours after a shower, the average person has an odor level of 6 out of 10. With Lumi, the average odor level is a 0 out of 10. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code CANCELLED at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code CANCELLED. Thank you, Lumi, for sponsoring today's podcast. For those of you who don't remember, <laughs> Flaky Flake was the younger guy that I was like seeing for a second. Mm. Then he like ended things with me or something. And then, oh, because he could never commit to any plan ever. It, like that's why we call him Flaky Flake. Okay. We were talking probably like six months ago or so, maybe more. During that time, he had invited me to something. Okay. He like invited me to this thing. And I was like, it's in November. Like there's no way you and I are still going to be talking by November. And he said, even if we're not. I don't know why I said that, by the way. I like willed it into an existence. <laughs> but he said, no matter what, I will not revoke your invite. OK, but this is flaky flake. He flaked on things that he made, you know, a day ago. So I'm like, why would he ever keep up with that? 
sends me a text a couple days ago and he goes, hello, tonight is the night. <laughs> he goes, I got you a ticket. Why do I have chills? Like, it's beautiful. Well, it is a beautiful story because I've had this bad taste in my mouth about him for all that time because I just yeah. did not like how he handled that situation. So it's so refreshing. I was like, oh my God, look at him committing to his word. I find it it's like so weirdly cute. I think like anything is cute if it's like after all this time you still thought about it, you know? Yeah, well, I, low key, like, I mean, I did pressure him into it, but like <laughs> it's still, you know what? It's Leave still that the same. out. <laughs> <laughs> Drafts. <laughs> I don't, like, I would never talk to him again, but I do want to be his friend. Like, I love him. Yeah. So it's like, now I just feel better about it. And I'm like, okay, you're not flaky flake. No, if I actually had to guess in a month from now, you guys will be like semi dating again. No. But I we were never it. dating to begin with. It was just like I was getting love bombs. Seriously, no. Real? Did you Not go? Really. Yeah, I went. How was it? Interacting? It was good. I honestly like. I don't want to like say because I don't want to like. Just emotionally, how was it interacting? No, with him? it was good. It was great to see him. Gave him a hug. We didn't speak that much, but it was just like it was just the thought of it, like the just the idea, like the full mm. circle. It all I was like, okay, good job. You kept your word. I will stop talking shit about you on the podcast. And now that brings me to my next question. No. But we can't, huh? Uh-uh. Oh, fuck. I actually haven't seen you in like a minute now. So I have so many like real life questions and updates that I need. But it's like a lot of them can't be I know. podcast topics. Ugh, I've been getting in trouble for talking about people on the podcast. Which is just so sad. You know what they say. We say it all the time. If you Taylor don't want Swift. me to write bad songs about you, don't do bad things. I haven't even said bad things about anybody on this podcast in a really long time but apparently some people just don't even want to be on here which is crazy because there's lots of people who do it's such <laughs> <laughs> it's such a real thing though like that i never knew when we started this podcast that like people would start treating you really differently because they're like afraid of being on the podcast or they want to be on the podcast i like, wish that were the case I, I would wish that everyone were treating me really well for fear of being spoken about right but people just keep treating us like shit and then they're mad when it's on the fucking podcast. And as much as I want to say, like, listen, I respect your privacy. I'm not going to talk about you on the podcast. That's there's not any longevity there because this is my job. Mm -hmm. Weirdest job ever. And I love my have. audience. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to share with them everything that I can. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It actually like I wish that the audience knew the like painstaking feeling that we'll have when like we want to podcast about something but can't like we we actually like want to tell y'all every well, single thing well it's because they get a little dangerous over there they're yeah. like a little too good God at what them. they do mm. <laughs> and we're a little too not good at what we do so real realest thing i've ever heard you can podcast however about going to brie and grace's show i did go to brie and grace's show i went to cleveland back to the house of blues Y'all, how for those who I don't chills? remember, the House of Blues was the vessel in which <laughs> Jortsgate occurred. <laughs> the vessel. I haven't been back, obviously, since Jortsgate because I actually don't get invited to the House of Blues very often. Yeah, even like it's it's actually such a weird coincidence, like you getting invited to their show and it being like. I also didn't there. realize that it was at, like that it, that it was at the House of Blues when they'd invited me. Yeah, and I'm like honestly so iconic. So you were back in the Jortsgate. Back in the Jortsgate. Yep, I had to do some apologizing because I'm just thinking like that fight. You guys don't understand how loud and like extreme that fight was. Everyone in that venue heard us. You call me. <laughs> and you just say one sentence you go tana <laughs> like brooke you go there's a third green room and the way that that sentence means nothing to anyone else <laughs> but we were using this house of blues as a literal vessel for our rat race argument <laughs> where we were running into <laughs> other rooms chasing each other down hallways <laughs> screaming crying throwing up and it was funny because we really were like bouncing from green room to green room. Like one of was us. It, it was so nice because one. if I needed to make like a really dramatic point, I could just get up and storm to my <laughs> green room. <laughs> like we're like the city girls or something. Like, they're just so crazy. Like us having separate green rooms. Yeah, fighting. there was a third and it was the biggest one. So I don't know who, why they were withholding that from us when we were there. <laughs> I think I know why. Oh, yeah. We would have probably <clears throat> turned it into a boxing ring. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so nice to be back. It really like now I have only positive memories at the House of Blues. 
all memories there. I think like it's the whole story. It's just it's a beautiful fucking story. It is. I will say I won't. I don't really have that many memories in general from the Plan B thing because they are drinkers. So, okay, and sh- I thought I could hang. I could not hang. I just I, drinking with them is weirdly like getting hazed. Yeah, well, it's like if the thing is, it wasn't like they were encouraging it. It was like no, I no. had this like imaginary pressure on me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like a mental thing because you're like, I, I have to keep up. Yeah. And Brianna. like they can do it. So why can't I? Yeah. I know why. Yeah. Because you can't speak English anymore. Real. It was really bad. I was apparently taking, um, you know, Southern Comfort shots, chasing them with pirate water. I probably had five par- pirate waters, which is like enough to kill somebody. A pirate water equates to like a four loco alcohol percentage. And you know, it's bad because gr- Brie texted me and she was like, yeah, you were fucking blacked out. I actually could not fathom the palpable anxiety I would have if I woke up to Brianna chicken fry being like you were blacked out last night. You're telling she, me you, that's actually literally happened to me when and I did, when I, I tell you I started getting tagged in videos of us at a bar I didn't even know we went to I'm on the bar I'm on the bar doing this <laughs> and the song's like no in, a country song and I'm like it was just it was all bad news in Turks she actually made me feel like I'd never drink a day in my life like, she's you know so I mean? good at it. Yeah, like she's just not hungover. Always funny. Like I know, and they can hang. Embarrassing I remember is hilarious. I don't know. I had a full sized ketchup bottle in my pocket when I woke up. What? What? Oh wait, you did you? You don't watch my TikToks, do you? You're a fake friend. I watch every single one of your TikToks. I have not seen that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I woke up full sized. Apparently, <laughs> where the fuck did you get it from? <laughs> well, let me go ahead and tell you. I was wearing a puffer vest. <laughs> I was wearing my aloe puffer vest. You're on fire today, and, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Grace took it upon herself to p- play a little pranky on me and put a full-size ketchup bottle in my hood. That's the funniest and thing And I was ever. so blacked out, it made it all the way home before I noticed. In my hood. Was I not being like pulled backward? Like, like I'm just imagining you like in the Uber. Yeah, like Zach Bryan's like, why is there a ketchup in her hood? I was humiliated. And then, then that adds to the anxiety too. Because it's like, I didn't even want to be anywhere near that man. Yeah, tell super me about fan. Zach Bryan. I didn't know he was coming when I saw that I on didn't your story. Either. I was gagged. I didn't either. And I'm like supporting her as the sweetest, Yeah, he's amazing. He's like, I mean, he's so sweet to her. And like, it was nice to meet him and stuff. But sometimes, you know how I am about that. Like, sometimes I don't want to meet people I yeah. really love. And That's, he was, it's not that I'm disappointed by it or anything, but I'd love to keep the magic alive. Like, I'd love yeah. still feeling like there are celebrities that I Absolutely. don't know and they are out of my reach. Like, I want to be such a fan from you from afar, just watching you sing something in the orange and knowing, living with peace. Me too. Knowing that you don't know anything about I went ahead and told him that you made me miss the first half of his concert. (laughs) First half is crazy. Did I? We missed the first half and I told him and he says that it wasn't even that good. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Do you know that like that was one of my favorite nights of my whole life ever? Like with you. And and imagine how fun it would have been had we (laughs) been to the whole show. Right. Right. I'm just. Double the fun. I'm just so happy his revival thing is at the end. Like, uh, if we miss that, I'd kill myself. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, but it was cool because he, like, he was, like, hyping Brie up. He's like, oh, my God, you're doing the House of Blues. Like, this is so amazing. I'm so jealous. I'm like, you're doing stadiums. But we just played the forum. <laughs> uh, we played does so Does he drink far. like they do? Like, could he keep up? Oh, wait. Not so far. Um, I don't know because, again, I wasn't there. I bet he could. So fucking funny. It's actually like it's I was inc- not it's there. Incredible. I, I like I wanted to be there so bad. I know I wish you'd come, but it was kind of fun. Like like you I was were just saying, underwater. I just loved like I was having so much fun just walking around Cleveland by myself. And like I went to like a random bar, had sat for four hours with a random old lady. And we just drank the little night away, okay? And I, I just I didn't want to drink anymore, but she was so nice and stuff. So I was like, I kept drinking. Then I go to pay. The guy next to us had paid for me and her, and he paid two rounds in advance, so her and I both had to have two more drinks, blacked out with her. And she was so fun. How old was she? She was probably like, it took a picture with her. <laughs> she was Stop. probably like like 60-something. Stop. She wasn't that old, but like. 
But you and I both get really weird about old people. Yeah, I also was sitting there like actually sobbing because I started looking at all these pictures of me and my cousin. And I was like sobbing. She was like, are you okay? That's probably why that guy paid for my drinks. <laughs> oh, you I can't even like, see her, but you can see her like little hand. Is she wearing a beret? Yeah. How kind. I don't know. I love her. <laughs> what the fuck? No, it was fun. And I love doing things by myself. Like, I felt like I was just having fun doing things yeah. by myself. I never get to do that here for it fear just, of, like, running. I don't know. Yeah. No, and it just feels so main character. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just at a random bar in Cleveland. Like, and it was cold, so I got to wear my little, like, hat. <sighs> Stop. And you love to wear a hat. I fucking love a Brooke hat. Brooke Schofield is happiest when she gets to wear a hat. Yeah, or I'm wearing a hat because I need more happiness. I'm so excited to finally see Noah Khan perform Stick Season live in person this year. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, sports, festivals, and more. I attended Drake this year at the Forum in Los Angeles and saw one of the best concerts of my life using SeatGeek. Artists like Travis Scott, Bad Bunny, Noah Khan, the Jonas Brothers are all on tour and you don't want to miss out. SeatGeek puts all of the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you are getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. So look for the green dots. Green means good and red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee Guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only website that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And the canceled viewers know I came through for you guys. Use my code TANA for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code TANA. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. I almost died. Where? <laughs> Me on the last podcast, I almost died. Different story. <laughs> TANA. <laughs> Fuck. I'm, I'm actually not kidding. This is like up there with uh-uh. how like wh- like dumb ways to die of like things I've done where it's like, what? You know my fear of bugs. You know how I bad. I do. I how- heard you killed a cockroach. Oh, I'll get there. I'll get there. But. And I, I, I'm saying this with like my whole chest, okay? I would rather play a round of Russian roulette then allow bugs to crawl all over me. Like mm-hmm. if, if it was like fear factor and cockroaches all over you or play a round of Russian roulette, I'm, I'm picking the roulette every time. Okay. And that's just my truth. Like my fear of bugs is so terrible. A little like, phobia situation. You know, there could be a fly and I like scream and I freak the fuck out and I like, I feel this feeling that nothing else makes me feel like where it's like I have to die right now or get this bug away from me. Like it's insane, right? Mm-hmm. I'm walking through the grass in Hawaii with Ty Collins and Makoa and Paige. And I can't even, oh my God. I look down at the grass and I look at Ty Collins' foot. There are like 17 cockroaches just all around his feet, up his, on his legs, on his feet. Like, and they're huge. Like they're Hawaiian cockroaches. Like yeah. there's they're something in their protein powder. Like, they're huge. They're the size of fucking, uh, like, a chihuahua. Not kidding. Okay. And I look down at my foot. Uh-oh. And I see. A cockroach. 37 of them. Oh, crawling no. Crawling on my foot. Oh, my. Look at, do you see my goosebumps right now? Like, actually, just thinking about it, the hair on my arm standing up. Oh, no. They're, I don't like, really love cockroaches either. I don't think anyone likes cockroaches. I just don't understand why they have to exist. But then I realize I am a literal cockroach. So no, it's like, I have a question, though. Do you, will you, do you like ladybugs? I used to as a kid. See, because I always, I but just, now, no. I always think about this, like, how sad it is that, like, I would immediately pick up, like, a a ladybug but if that same bug just didn't have spots i'd be like ew i also like i always think about how as a kid i'd pick up a ladybug and now i would never and i like get all existential and weirdly sad about that i've been Um, watching oh god you have to watch this it's um no i need to finish this oh i'm sorry i'm so sorry i i have to tell you sorry i have add no there's oncoming traffic Across oh. directly from this grass patch. Well, that's one way to get rid of a cockroach is to get hit by a car. <laughs> I run into oncoming traffic. I just start sprinting and screaming. I run into oncoming traffic. Like, n- like not, and like fast oncoming traffic. Like, but see, another thing. Speaking of oncoming traffic. Yeah, how do you explain? Like, yeah, I got 
hit by a car running this from a car bug. Went 100 miles a fucking hour, like slams on the brakes and stops. Paige and Ty and Makawa are screaming. Like, You're horrible. You could have caused a pileup. Like screaming like I died. And then I'm just standing in front of this car, <laughs> looking the driver dead in their eyes. Like, I'm so sorry. You're so lucky, you know? but you could have really hurt somebody. Yeah. I'm glad you're okay. Horrible scenario. Like, I, I just hate that my immediate reaction when there's a bug is like, get out. So it was like, run. I know. I kind of get that. I'm, I'm not like a bug girl. I don't really like bugs. But then I like, I just saw oh, this video that made me like literally sick to my stomach. It was like this little baby girl. She's probably like four. And it's like all these videos of her outside, like picking up bugs and snakes. And she's just like so innocent. And she just has no concept of like what's gross and stuff. And it's so sweet. And that's what I was going to tell you is I've been watching. There's... I don't even know if you knew about this because I didn't. And it's been going on for a long time as Pamela Anderson has a show. Watch the whole thing. Pamela's You're Garden of Eden. You're my soulmate. Oh my God. I had no idea it, it even existed. And I've been obsessed with it. Like watching her out, like tending to all her like vegetables and stuff. And I'm like, you know, she's not getting mad if there's a bug on her foot. And she's, she's like just, just such a beautiful, Anderson. perfect angel. You know, I like keep up with everything she does. Yeah. Like I knew the second that show dropped, I went to my I room. had no idea. I watched, I, I watched like so many of it on the plane yesterday. It actually, like, was one of the, like, weird catalysts of, like, me understanding that there's more joy, like, out there. Yeah, because she could life. have the most glamorous, like, amazing life ever that she wants here. And instead, she chooses to live in Vancouver Island. On a beach. She, mm -hmm. she wrote this Instagram caption yesterday. Not kidding, made me cry. She's so pure. I can't believe we both were watching that. Because it's, like, every time I've told anyone about the show, everyone's like, what are you talking about? Oh, or doesn't so care. Cute. And it, like, disheartens me so much. And I just love watching her make her like little tomato sauce. She's like, I'm putting roses in it. And her mom's Which, like, why? And, like, <laughs> how cute it is that she just like married her contractor that like was helping her build the house. And then she'll put on like her glitter Playboy shoes and he'll be like, how cute, like living with uh, all the memories Imagine that guy there. telling his family like, yeah, I'm, I'm marrying Pamela Anderson. And they're like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote yesterday, I am most at home with my animals on the ocean with a light softness thrown about reading, writing, and dreaming. See, but that just shows, you know, people go so far out of their way. Like, everybody in the world who isn't here, uh, well, at least, like, in my experience, like, how I was before I moved here, I thought, like, fame and fortune and Hollywood and all that was, like, the all anybody could ever want. Be all end all. And she is a perfect example. Like, you, you can have all of that, and it's not... And it's so inspiring and motivating to me, like seeing someone like actually just be like, fuck this. It's sucking the life out of me. But I can I can memorialize it and, you know, romanticize it and have love for that era. But that's mm -hmm. not who She's I want to be She's still so anymore. fabulous. She still has, you know, every designer, yeah. everything like. Yeah, but. I, I love that, like, the just... things that make her happy, like she's pulling weeds and she's she's fucking Pamela it's, Anderson. It's absolutely the goal. And like, I am so inspired by it. And that's funny that you've been watching that because same. I think maybe one day you could be pulling weeds. I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. My little Hawaiian boyfriend lives on like an actual farm, like chickens and goats in Maui. Love, and then just, like Bretman? Yeah, exactly. And just wakes up, like feeds his chickens, smokes a joint, does whatever little like work things he has to do in the day, goes and surfs all day, makes sure that wherever he is, he's watching the sunset and repeats that's a real life that someone has See, I love that's, that. that's my that week that's my weekend life right now i've been at that ranch every weekend riding horses i wish we could talk about I'm in that a ranch but i won't era. even open my mouth that's just another podcast topic that i so badly wish we could have like i but, know but it's so fun yeah and you have to keep going and if we podcast about it you're not going back to that ranch right no Bruh. i've been horseback riding i've been playing with the goats it's so fun I brought Ari. Ari can rip it on a horse. Ari's fast. <laughs> no, he's not. Yes, he is. I have so many videos. He's like, he's so good. He's the only one like if a horse needed to be galloped, they would put Ari on it because I'm not I'm not galloping yet, as you could probably imagine. Do you know I was in actual literal tears at Ari on that horse in Chrome Hearts and Converse? It was so funny. He was amazing. Ari was the funniest person I've ever met in Hawaii. Like ever. Like oh, yeah. Ari was like, please bring me. And I'm like, all right, I'm just trying to express to you like this isn't going to be a Tana trip. This is going to be a Tana's trip, you know, and those are two very different things, you know. And he's like, no, please, I want to go. I want to be peaceful. I want to whatever. Like, and I'm like, Ari, I know you like the back of my hand. 
you're going to get there and all I'm going to want to do is be underwater and you're going to be miserable. Like, without, you know, or he's bougie and that's fine. I love that about him. But I was just like, you know, he's like, no, please bring me, please bring me. I'm like, fine, come to Hawaii, right? We get there and the first day that I'm just underwater, floating, flopping, you know me and the way I run into a pool, it doing is like, the whole that's thing. It's such an interesting thing about you. Sorry to cut you off, but like you really will just fucking live underwater. It's my happiness. In the ocean too, which is crazy because it's like you're afraid of bugs, but like not. Not sharks. I was swimming actually was sharks passing by me like at like midnight in Hawaii to the, like I believe it. I've, I've seen you I, like just out as far as you can be in the middle of the night i'm like like okay i'm i'm so unafraid of the ocean i think it's weirdly i do think it's a zodiac thing and i'm not a zodiac person but i'm a cancer and i'm a triple cancer like all like my rising my whatever yeah so i'm a triple water sign so i think that that's why water brings me so much peace maybe I i don't know um so i'm flopping in the ocean and ari looks at me and he goes i'm gonna go get some merch he goes to get some hawaii merch right comes back with a chrome hearts bag like couldn't flop in the ocean at all had to go to chrome hearts that's hilarious buys a chrome hearts shirt that says honolulu and he goes i got merch and then 24 hours later he irish exits hawaii that's so iconic it's so he told me he irish exited though because everybody was blacked out he was just unhappy to like i don't know i saw page and ties tiktoks but you know Ari, that's not like his, yeah. he he doesn't want to like rot on a yeah. beach all day while people surf. Like it's not his like you know who does journey me. You know absolutely. Let's go now. Um, but tells everyone in the room, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Gets on Hinge, makes a random stranger on Hinge. That's dangerous. Pick him up. From the Ritz Carlton and drive him to the airport. First of all, imagine your first date is just an airport drive. Make that one make sense. Like, imagine the awkward small talk. Like, why? Like Uber. I kind of love that. Gets on an immediate flight home. That's really dangerous. Do not try this at home. Although I yeah. trust people in Hawaii. Weirdly, yeah. Like everyone just has that like comfort. I feel like it's too small a community for anybody to be really crazy. Yeah. And people out there just actually like love extending. Yeah. Everything is very like here. Let favors. me do you a favor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but just how fucking funny. Do you know the only person he said goodbye to was my man? I got his Instagram. I was like, are you? Well, yeah, he's you? got that personality on him. Ugh, I need a new man. No, I don't. Yeah, what's going on? Nothing much. We just can't podcast about it. No, like really, like nothing. Why do you have a cheeseburger in your purse? Oh, Did she just pull that out of her purse? <laughs> yes, she what fucking fuck? did. There's the ketchup in the hood, the cheeseburger in the bag. I, um, can I have a bite? Yeah. What the hell else do we have to talk about? Um, let me see. Oh, I had another like synchronicity, weird like coincidence situation happen to me. What I haven't happened? told you about yet. I went to this concert. I went to the Zach Bryan or wait, no, Zach Brown Band concert. Um, mm. and. His opener was this guy, Marcus King, okay? Mm-hmm. And he's so fucking amazing. Like, I've had a few artists, like, ever that I see live, and I'm like, oh, my God, like, this is my new hyperfix. Like, this is my favorite person ever. He's so talented. And I was obsessed. I go home. I send my dad every video because I'm like, you're going to think this guy's so amazing, whatever. And I make a TikTok about him. I was, mm-hmm. like, talking about him, and I, like, went down this huge, like, deep dive He's married. He has, like, the cutest little wife. They're, like, the most fabulous. Stop. I'm, no, I'm scared. Like, you know how sometimes you eat McDonald's and you, like, eat a bite and you're, like, no. someone's toes in that? No. Like, like toe that. Um, that was that bite. Like, I feel like I got some, like, gillet. Anyway, I pipe Ew. it. Um, <laughs> they're, like, this, like, super fabulous, like, southern couple. I'm obsessed with them. So I make a TikTok about them. And I'm, like, talking about them and I'm saying, like, all of this. And I, I draft it. I don't post it because I'm like, mm, this is creepy. I'm being mm. creepy. I've never, obviously, like, I didn't see them, talk to them or anything. I just, like, watch them from afar. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I start getting, like, tagged over and over and over again in this girl's TikTok. And they're like, oh, my God, you look exactly like Brooke Schofield. 
I go to her profile and it's her. It's his wife. I was like, how weird is that? She comments back and she goes, oh my God, I think I saw that girl at my husband's show the other day. I have chills. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? And I commented back. I was like, yes, I was there. And I'm, and, and so I screen recorded the TikTok that I made about them. Yeah. Cause you could see the date I had made it days ago. Yeah. And I was like, I'm obsessed with his wife and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, what are the odds? Like no one's ever, ever co- like tagged me in one of her things. But now all of a sudden thousands of people are like telling me I look like her and I've never seen her before. And I just love them so much. But then, then I tell her, I go, I, it's been so long since I've had an artist that I like love that much. It's like the last person was Chris Stapleton. I was like, I loved yeah. Chris Stapleton like the same you way. Did. Remember you were trying to get me to stay in some city. Right. Yes. Because I wanted to see him so yeah. bad. So then I'm like, I'm, I tell her that whatever we're talking. A couple days later, Chris Stapleton announces his tour opening for him is Marcus King. You're actually and gonna she levitate at that. I show. think she probably thought that I knew that when I was telling her that. She probably like assumed that I knew, yeah. but I had no idea. I didn't even like connect those two in any way. That's actually, crazy. So anyway, we have to go see them. Yes, we do. And if you have not, you, oh my god, you would love this guy. He is the most talented person I've ever seen in my entire life. Marcus King. Show now. He's. Do you know what made me the happiest girl in the world? By the way, that I just have to like give flowers to really quick on this huh? podcast. Noah Kahan and jelly roll being nominated for grammy like new like new yeah really year. amazing well deserved did you see jelly roll um J- jelly rolls acceptance speech at the cmas yes so amazing they're the cutest fucking couple in the world bunny and jelly roll they're, they're, like that's I my know. that you know that that's like my actual goals i know <laughs> me too did you see um trisha said that she wants to be the third uh host on canceled no she fucking didn't yes she did she said i wish i could just be the third host on canceled i said trisha we're begging we should actually have a moment with trisha where we do like five episodes in a row i think such or we should at least like try to have her at least once a month or something like people love her so much and i love to talk to her she's my favorite person to talk to actually literally on this planet that's crazy we should have had her today literally she went out of her way her and oscar to get the san diego sweat what's so funny is i wore so i ordered a pink onesie to wear on trisha's podcast and when it came in it was not up to trisha standard okay it was like too nude it wasn't even hardly pink so i was like oh gotta scrap it yeah and i'm like i felt like katie heron meaning in mean girls i had, did not have one pink thing except for this one <laughs> random tourist what shop great sweatshirt. analogy by the way Oh, we got them together. Yeah. yeah. And so that was the only thing I had, but it's so funny. You're just Trisha- Aria it's Crumb Hearts. <laughs> no, but like, but Trisha loves it so much. And she had somebody in San Diego go to that gift shop and get them for her and Oscar. Okay. Yes. So that they can cosplay. They got the mini up. Uh, her with the Bottega earrings and the slick tear. It I just, but it just, died. first of all, it feels like literally a make a wish. Like, I can't believe, I can't believe uh, it. That's exactly how I feel every time I'm like around her. Me like too. it feels so make a wish coated. I'm like, why, love, why are like, you doing this? I love that it's a sweatshirt that I like accidentally had to wear. And she's like, I love it. <laughs> I love it too. It's my favorite. Bro. She's the cutest human being alive. Do you want to know actually one of my dream canceled guests? Who? Holly Madison. Oh, me too. So and much. And she comments on all her stuff. Yeah, she's like, I know she would come on. I just haven't like gotten around to doing it. Right. And you were just talking about weird coincidences actually. And it's, it's so random, but we're having Megan Trainer on tomorrow. Yay! <coughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm so fucking excited. I hope excited. she brings her kid. I love her so fucking much. She's like the funniest person alive. I never thought that Megan Trainer would have like the dark sense of humor she does and that she'd text so me like funny. hilarious shit. Like obviously she's so intelligent in order to have the career she has, but like I didn't sometimes that doesn't always translate into darkness, like dark humor. And I like I I love her. I love that. I love that she's coming on. But I originally was trying to have Holly Madison on tomorrow and I was like, I meant to reach out and then I just, the Megan stuff happened. So I was like, perfect. Like I'll, I'll reach out to Holly eventually. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a conversation about this with Paige in Hawaii. Right. And this woman randomly comes up to me. Her son's girlfriend was like a fan of the podcast. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I don't know what the fuck you do, but my kid won't like shut the hell up about like I whatever it is. Whatever. Say that. So do I so like, much. I don't even fucking know you, but my kid does. Yeah. <laughs> and so I like meet her daughter and like whatever. But then I start bonding with her like so heavily. And she's so like just lives the dream life that we were just talking about. So bunny jelly roll coated. Like she's just like this. Like she's probably in her 40s, but like hair extensions on 10 like just showed up to this resort in hawaii like staying with her kids like 
sexy girl tattoos like you uh-huh. know like so 2000s coded tattoos like so you know what i mean yeah. big ass titties like i just i bond more with like a fucking like blonde milf than like most people ever because it's like you're doing exactly what i want to be doing you know well, and her course. husband's like low-key beat and she's like well like, what do you do he's swiping you know and i just start talking to her <clears throat> and bonding with her i'm I was sure like, she loves him she does she does she was telling me she looks at me in the eyes and she goes this morning i was shaving his chest with a razor and it dies that's gonna be you at 40. you want to see look you're looking into your future right now um and but anyways i'm like talking to her for like like 15 minutes right after i have this holly conversation and i go you're so playboy coded like And that's my favorite type of person, like someone Mm -hmm. that you can just tell has been to the Playboy Mansion, whatever. And I was just saying that, like I had no idea where she was from. We're in the middle of Hawaii, whatever. She goes, I live in Santa Clarita now. I used to live in Los Angeles. I was a Playboy bunny. Look at this photo of me and Holly Madison. After I had this whole conversation about fucking Holly Madison. Oh my God, how funny. She was just telling me all these fucking batshit stories about the Playboy Mansion. And you know, I've like, I know every. Like, I've never been to that house, and I could, like, paint the floor plan. Like, it I know. It just makes me so sad that we'll never get to go there. I know, like, it wasn't, it's not, like, this glamorous place. We probably wouldn't have wanted to go there, but yeah, it's, it just looked so, like, It was I definitely was to. horrible in all the ways that L.A. is still horrible just in that time, you know? Yeah. Is but, there, like, a, oh, well, no. I almost said, like, Dan Bilzerian is, like, <laughs> like, those are the same people who would have probably gone to. Playboy. Yes, <laughs> anyone who goes to a Dan Bilzerian party would have gone to a Playboy party back in the day for well, sure. You're, but you were talking about the Playboy Mansion, yeah? Yes. Yeah. That was like the first time I ever saw like a, like a woman's tits. Like my <laughs> mom would like watch. Amari's like, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, but that's why also you're... Our mother is my best friend. Like, she'd be her watching the girls next door. Like she we, loved it. I've unpacked like anything. the Playboy theories with her for like not kidding that, like, thousands I was, like, of hours in, like, of my Playboy, life like yeah the girls next door and like sex in the city and that's why you ended up liking me <laughs> oh my god you've you never want... seen sex in the city no i haven't oh i don't even want you've you to watch it because it? you will move to new york she's never seen sex in the city i that is like that'll cure everything everything i know about life and love and friendship and relationships is i love that'll in the cure city. everything it's like you're depressed little fix it you're like it watch will. sex they in do, the city uh, no seriously it's like I'm, I need to. I'm not kidding. Same thing with Grey's Anatomy. Like, I almost feel like those, like, I learned so much from the relationships in those shows that I almost feel like I yes. lived them. And, like, Gossip wow. Girl. Gossip Girl, for sure. Yeah, girl. But, but, but Sex in the City is, like, grown-up Gossip Girl. Yes, yes. It's so funny. Like, I'm like, Dexter changed my life. No, no, no. <laughs> like, and you're like, oh, it's my favorite show in the No, but world. you will, lo- you oh, will live for that started. show. You Makes will love sense. Samantha. Oh, my God, so much. You will hate Charlotte because she's just like me. She, well, I don't you hate you, see, so you need I don't need to think watch I'll it. Well, no, but do you, well, you know what I mean. Just She's a like random, uptight. hilarious anecdote that I have to share with you. Yeah. Um, Amari was just talking about, you know, growing up with his mom watching Playboy, and I was like, that's why you like me, right? Do you know that the first time I ever realized I was a whore <laughs> 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 was in a, com- a real conversation with Amari Stewart? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I was talking about this like two days ago, actually. That's so funny. Yeah, were you? Yeah, like I was like, I, I was with Isabella, I believe. Yeah, we were talking about how I was like, do you remember like in high school, like when Dan just like straight up, just tell the story. So essentially <laughs> one day, like I'm spending every day at Amari's house, like I do, you know, um, and we would just spend hours like rotting in his room talking shit. And Nothing's really school. changed. We're in high school. And I'm talking about like one of the guys that I'm hooking up with at the time. Keep in mind, in the past week, I had just gotten eaten out by someone on your track team in your closet. In my closet while I'm in the room. But luckily, that honestly How was a great closet to do it in. It was, it was like a walk-in closet. But like, imagine me just sitting in my bed just being I so annoyed. I remember you telling me that story. Hear her being like, eh. <laughs> and I'm like trying to turn on my TV, but obviously I don't have the most luxurious fucking TV. It won't go loud enough. <laughs> horrible, hear. horrible 15, story. Fifteen. We should not be doing that at fifteen. Vegas, Guys. Vegas. I think it was like the um, first time I saw a condom too, because I remember seeing a condom and I was like, "What the fuck?" I'd so never actually seen. I was <laughs> 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 Anyways, and I'm just sitting in Amari's bed and I'm talking shit and I look at him and I go, "Do you think I'm a whore?" He looks at me deadpan and goes. Yeah. And I never, ever, like, had the thought 
Like I never realized. And I was just screaming, like so offended. I was like, I, you know what I mean? And she it was just beyond offended. I'm not oh. kidding. I, I, I would. Cause like, I'd never known. <laughs> I thought the second story of my house was going to collapse. Like it was going to become a one story. You she was so know. offended, but I was I like, know. I don't care. Well, you had to have an inkling or you wouldn't have asked. I was like, it doesn't affect me at all. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I love you regardless. Yes, you're a whore. And mind you, <laughs> mind you, she's also getting picked up by boys. Like, at like fucking midnight like i think she would sleep at mine sometimes just so she could get dick and like she'd get picked up in these cars so and just real. like go fuck them like down the street in the neighborhood there was one time so there was one whoa, time whoa. Where, there was one time scaring the shit out of me but she okay had this guy come pick her up so she could fuck him in his range rover oh lost but, my virginity him he's amazing we love you logan anyway. yeah. <laughs> he he comes and picks her up his friend is with him his friend is walking around my neighborhood just doing laps and i was like do you want to just Come inside. He came inside and just chilled with me. Like, like, well, like it was just us just on the sidelines while they're just doing the deeds somewhere down, like at the neighborhood park. Oh like, my God. It was that like, like transactional. You were 15. I, I might've been like, I don't know, whatever. 15, you know, 16, I didn't, 17. I didn't have sex until, well, actually, no, I did. And I then know. I, I know. We've walked very different paths. <laughs> well, no, it just like, I can't believe that that like none of my friends, I get, I don't Everyone think really was having either. sex. Everyone. I like lost my virginity actually, late in my friend group. I feel like mine were, but it was like everyone had had sex with like one person. Hmm. Vegas, horrible place. I've only had sex um, with two guys. Do you know what I used to? <sighs> me too. Me three. Um, do you know what I used to do? I, when I would get picked up by guys in high school to like hook up with them, like, and they'd be with their friends and they'd be like, oh my God, bring a friend. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, like, like a guy's with his guy friend and he's like, yeah. like bring a friend, whatever. I would tell guys that I was with my girlfriend, Amari. I'd be like, yeah, me and Amari, like she's just me, upstairs. Me, every time I invite Ari anywhere, I'm and, like, Ari's coming. And they would be so excited. Like, damn, she sounds foreign. She sounds exotic. Amari, like, sounds like a bad bitch. <laughs> I'd get into the car, car, braces, looking like a fucking peanut. And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, hi, guys. I would scam men into thinking Amari was, like, my girlfriend that we would all, like, double date with. Well... You they have were such a good pissed. We just wanted to ride. <laughs> Not kidding. It's so crazy that we lived a life without Uber. Like, think about how I am as a person and how poor I was, right? Think about the shit I would do for a ride. <laughs> do you remember? Yeah. There was one time I'm sitting outside of my house. I get home from school. <laughs> <laughs> there was this guy that like we were we just knew we could get him to take us anywhere not getting but in that area i <laughs> lied my balls off to this guy i'm like i'm locked outside of my house i just got home from school like will you like, take we'd me make to the Tana's? most elaborate stories and, up about like why we needed a ride like I, we were like he's locked out he doesn't know what to do his parents are not coming home literally at all i made him already sit outside on his lawn mind oh you God, i came and got him so he actually thought he was mind you my mother's been oh my working God. from home since i was like seven <laughs> like she was inside like there was no like, i could get in like Imagine easily she, like, opens the door you're like, <laughs> like you're ruining the bit bitch <laughs> what are you I gonna do have, take like, me older guy like i always like wanted to hang out with like guys who are way older oh, now i look always. back on it and i'm like why the fuck were they like Daddy seniors issues. hanging out with freshmen Same. and they were always like the biggest losers and you thought they were cool because they were seniors and now you look back on it and you're like oh wow Every man I and ever knew And just like that city. smoking in the back of some random dusty dude's car. Do you know? That was like her favorite pastime. Like in Mine too. Oh so <laughs> I had like, I was We'd such a stoner. we take a bong around. Like in the back of the car. Like why are you ripping a six foot bong in the back Dude, of the we had car? A place, You're 12. We had a place called Hangar Park. Yeah, there's just police everywhere. And we would just fucking smoke. Everything bad that's ever happened to me happened in Hangar Park in Tempe, Arizona. So just so you know. Don't go there. The smoke. I could actually do a whole podcast about like the smoking when I was young stories. Like, Me too. That's why I don't smoke now. Cause I'm like, Ugh. Same, same. No, but the way I was like, yeah, <laughs> numb. <Hey. laughs> Thank God. Um, do you want to know something horrible? I actually did. Do I? Um, while we're on the topic of rides and gas money, I want to formally apologize to a girl named Sierra Hall. <laughs> <laughs> you like still owe her like 15 bucks to this day. <laughs> and she will never let it Just go. Send my to her. I would always tell people like, can you please pick me up from my house and drive me here? I'll give you gas money. Oh. And then they'd pick me up and they'd drive me somewhere. And then I'd say, I don't have my wallet. I owe you. Oh. How horrible, horrible. But I had to get, like, I'd have to get to, like, work. And my parents weren't going to take me. And I, like, you know. Yeah. Like, or just different. School, even. And um, 
Although, you know, for one ride, what what's that in gas? Like $3? But at the time, like $3 Not was even. everything. And I feel time. like when you're just like new to like driving and like you're like a high schooler and stuff, like any amount of gas money is just amazing. Unless you have like rich ass parents that just don't give a fuck. Like, you know, like I feel like. Oh my, yeah. Like we'd be scrounging for like a dime uh-huh. to literally put. I'm not kidding. Like I remember with Monique, we would just like oh. actually put 75 cents on the tank. Oh yeah. You, you like, remember, I know you remember being on dashes. Always on dashes. <laughs> she was her gas tank was never actually full one time, uh, <laughs> and we do the most fucked up shit on for gas dashes. money. Hitting bottle runs on dashes. Can we even dash away? What's a dash? Basically, like the like car, like your gas tank you gets to the the little dashes. Oh well, uh, that was. Confusing. It's like your reserve like, you gas tank. Drive. Like there's no yeah. gas in your car. Like I can't even read how many miles. You know that are. still to this day, no matter what, I never. Ever, this is like the the like low key poor in me. I will never fill up my tank. It's actually ever. Like really bad I will for your never car. put in more than like twenty dollars at a time. It's and it just makes it so much more difficult. And it's like I have to spend the money regardless. In fact, it's making it way harder. Like it's so much easier to just do it. But I'm always like, Ugh, no, I'll just put a little in. I remember the day that I found out my parents smoke weed. Like I didn't know for like a long time. I well, remember that too. Looking back, like, duh. Um, but like I found it like in a kitchen cabinet mm. and I was like, I have hit the jackpot on these fucking idiots. Oh my Are God, you kidding me? Fu- imagine if I did that. I was like, we would oh rob God, crystal meth? them, rob <laughs> them and no, be like so blasted. I would take their weed and I would sell it because oh. <laughs> it's like, what? I shouldn't know you smoke weed. Like at the t- I was like, so yeah, what are they going to come to you and say, where's my weed? Yeah, not at all. So I knew I hit the jackpot and then I would specifically hit up the rich kids and tell them like, I have the best weed Didn't ever. Didn't you like, like sell someone oregano once? Yes. Yes. Not once. <laughs> multiple times. Oh my God. The drug dealer. The fact that I was like, actually like mm, horrible. Um, but I would hit up the rich kids. And I would tell them, like, I have the most gas weed ever, whatever. Weed is no, at the time was normally like 10 bucks a gram, right? And I would sell it to these rich, like, dumb kids who just wanted to get high for like 40 bucks a gram. And it'd be my parents' weed. And then I would, like, hit the jackpot on That's honestly gas so money. smart. <sighs> gas money and McDonald's. Mm. No, it was always Del Taco because, you know, Del Taco, it used to be, I don't know if it is, like, was, like, historically the cheapest. Yes. And it's still so good. Like, I like love Like, two Taco. tacos. Like I lived at Taco Bell. I would walk. We would walk to Taco Bell. It's so crazy. We walked everywhere in Arizona, and it's like Vegas. It's fucking 130 yeah, degrees outside. Same. Walked everywhere, and all of it's like track homes. It's just, it's literally exactly the same as Vegas. Yeah. We'd just walk, be walking all. Would through you the walk barefoot and like, like callus the whole bottom of your foot because of how hot it was or is that i think it was just like a natural progression of any person who lives there your feet are fucking like i think i have a forever so like people who bring their little dogs out and don't i had one of the you know those piggy banks that like count the money like as the coins go in it can like read how much like the coin is or whatever i had one of those and like we would bust it open all the time we'd bust open my fucking little piggy bank because we'd see how much was like it would digitally reach you how much money's in it or whatever and we'd just like take all the coins and walk to mcdonald's because it was like you just like had to walk to this little park in my neighborhood and like it was just so funny because like back in the day like a uh, hot and spicy was like a dollar and eight cents i know like, what happened to that is it well does like the mcdonald's still have a dollar menu they're like three something now which is crazy and it's so like so crazy and it's crazy the way that you'd actually feel like you came up if you found a quarter yeah. Like I'd put pennies together for my food every mm-hmm. day. Like if you found a quarter, you were like, I'm fucking loaded. And we would like show like, up like with just coins to this coins. McDonald's. <laughs> we got banned from there for a I paid time. for everything in coins for like three years of my life. McDonald's on Valley Verde. Oh, I miss it. Yeah. I, what if, <laughs> I wish we could all go back and like make each other like live each other's lives for like. I always think about that, honestly. Or like if we just all were friends, like if all then. of us, because we have a big friend group now, we like if we were been, all though. friends like, in high school, is, like what would have been? I know like? I would have hated you guys in high school and vice versa. Like imagine, like <laughs> it's like, oh, Brooks nudes leaked. Like <laughs> it, but that, that's the point, though. That like would I would have been fucking like it just wouldn't have happened. I didn't take a nude until like last the year. concept of like all of us at like an assembly together. <laughs> Do you know what's like fucked? No, but like I think, I think even in college, like I, f- I like, I feel like we wouldn't have been friends. I feel like not we that like been I friends. wouldn't have liked you guys, but just like so different, different that like we would have danced together. Or you something. lived somewhere yeah. where there was like, like socially there were goody kids and bad kids, right? Like in Las Vegas, that doesn't happen. Everyone's just a bad kid. Do you know what no, I mean? No, I don't. I just don't really think we had that many 
like we were the bad kids and we weren't even bad exactly. but everyone's like actually i was like the rebellious like in the rebellious group and we weren't really doing anything that bad except for drinking like did you guys ever hit like bottle runs no we weren't stealing oh at all someone was it just wasn't me uh-huh but, but that's what you- that's what i mean there's like social hierarchies in the regard yeah to, like, it was the, it was the random seniors who were hanging out with the freshmen those were the people who were gonna steal. yeah everyone was stealing did you guys have fake ids like in high school like absolutely not i didn't have a fake school? id until i never that had a fake so id crazy. my first fake id i had braces in the picture that's i tried to and i lost it the, i had such a good fake id i lost it the first day so i was like fuck this <laughs> my first boyfriend ever summer that's what he did like to for his side hustle uh-huh. he would make fake ids and i'd just be like posing against a wall my first was fake so was scared. new york actually and i remember the first time i used it the guy goes he looks at, he just knows it's fake because first of all it's like fucking it, it <laughs> Do was you actually it was bad know? <laughs> he, he, he just talked about bottle runs do you actually know what that consists of don't you like go in <laughs> stick it in your pants ymca run <laughs> yes but like our friend group and i'm still friends with all these people to this day that's what's like actually horrifying there were bottle runs and there were cart runs <laughs> <laughs> no okay <laughs> i i will actually have to tell you about bottle runs and cart runs really quickly so bottle runs there, there's a bunch of different ways to do a bottle run. Like, essentially, like, you could walk in and, like, discreetly steal it in your pants and then, like, leave, whatever. But our friend group got to a point where everyone would just get out of the car. Someone would be driving, waiting, like, a fucking hit and run. Like, waiting to, like, pick you back up. Like, waiting right in the driveway of the store. And, like, ten of us piled into one car would all charge in the store. Like I've done it running at full speed and everyone in the store knew you were stealing but there's a policy called oh the where no they tra- can't chase you yeah, where they no can't chase, chase you don't they have that at sephora yes, yes. <laughs> don't try it <laughs> <laughs> or well, also oh, doesn't shit. have it anyways um, <laughs> everyone would just run in and everyone would know knocking shit over in the store like causing distractions shoving bottles shoving bottles and then you just run back to the car like all the workers would know that's so and crazy. Like, you, but when what, you would what hit, about the next time you saw? What about the next time you went in for like a rotisserie? No, okay, you wouldn't okay. go. That would happen to me because <laughs> oh. I like used on to rotation, hit these bottle. You wouldn't go to that grocery store for like two weeks. I used to hit these bottle runs and like I would always get sent in because I looked the most innocent. And like I would wear like I remember I would always wear like my big pants, my rock revivals. He does look like a the rock revivals slayed for bottle runs because they were too big for me. And like I would always wear like a big t shirt. And it's like I my like go to was always a handle of Smirnoff. And a bottle of Bacardi Dragonberry. Didn't you Those shatter a bottle one time? Was that you? Yes, and it slid down my leg. Like, it's because the pants were a little too big. Yeah. <laughs> it like slid down. Right and then I'm like, oh, it was so bad. But I remember the very first time I ever hit one like that, which she was talking about, where you just charge in. Like, because I thought that I was just going to go in, be innocent, whatever. But I'm with a bunch of boys. We left this bonfire. We needed more alcohol. And I'm like, okay, like, we're all just going to go and do it discreetly. And I'm like, walking in. No, they come charging past me. I was like, oh, we're doing this. Oh, oh we're God. like doing this. Like, we're robbing the store. <laughs> 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 We robbed this fucking store. Bonfire went amazing. But then, like, there was a period of time after, like, I would go to the Smiths a lot, like, with my mom. Oh, like, no. in the daytime, the whole like, time you're like, normal. No, exactly. And, like, this man, there was this one specific worker that remembered me. So, like, he would look at me and just stare me down with the dirtiest He's fucking totally awful look. Color. And it's, like, Deborah's like, buying, like, chicken and, like, fucking <laughs> cream of mushroom soup and, like, just, like, you know, like, Oh, my God, I would have never stepped foot in there again. And I'm standing there, and it's, like, what are you going to do now? Like, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm here with my mom. Like I'm surprised. <laughs> you had the cool mom. I feel like we had... The reason we didn't even have to do any of that shit is because we had certain moms in high school that would just supply our alcohol like oh but deborah had no idea for the longest time oh, like she, ours would like fully like we'd moms who would make like special like mixed drinks and stuff for us all the parties were always at like mm-hmm. that one particular Ari house the leg like that like there was a rich side of vegas that did that but like we were all like fucking poor deborah's so parents like, were it, buying there wasn't alcohol anything for rich about it. it was just like like well no, like having the money pay. having the money to like oh deborah's oh, fun now but she used to be so fucking strict like it was like scary really? like i don't even know how she would like like, like, she would sneak out and, like, it would be, like, fine. Because she's, like, whatever. Like, yeah, she's that's not my like, kid. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's, like, Amari, you are not walking out that goddamn door with her. Like, my grandparents? <laughs> well, my, like, and then you'd walk out the goddamn door no, with her. No, I'd, like, sneak my, out. My grandparents had boys. Like, it was my uncle and my dad, obviously, like, growing up and stuff. So they didn't, like, know how to be, like, authoritative at all. They yeah. were just, like, whatever. Like, do whatever you want. So... I did. I remember vividly, honestly, the scariest. And also, this bitch right here was so fucking awful for this one. It was one of the times where we were like, oh, Amari, for an exotic bitch, like, whatever. We sneak out, 
And then we get to like this guy's house. Deborah's calling me nonstop, and I'm like, guys, panicking. Like, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I, this is like my second time sneaking out. Like, she's gonna like actually like lynch me. Like, I'm really fucking scared. I don't remember the story, and I'm scared. We have to like turn around. They have to take me home because she's like, get the fuck home now. <laughs> and Tana and Monique are sleeping over, and we get back to my house. And Deborah's just like standing outside, like on the porch, like ready to like whoop my ass. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, guys, like you're sleeping over, like come with me. And like I'm scared. Like she's like, like, no, see, I'm, I'm on a like, I'm on the road. Me, like I'm gonna get in less trouble. Did we be, leave like, to go get dick? And they're like, we're afraid of her. No, like we're <laughs> like have fun. I'm like, guys, no, please come. And they're like, no, like, we're going to get dick. <laughs> I have to tell you, get dick is crazy. You were like, literally a child. Yep. Begging. Um, I have to tell you about cart runs really quick. Okay. Because we just don't do a bar runs and cart runs. So we were just talking about the, you know, familiar to us, the no chase policy. Certain stores have no chase policies. Target has a chase policy. Never steal from Target. Anyways. Um, also, caught the fuck up there. Like, I'm banned from the one Don't they do they did at the win to you where they like wait until they have enough to really target yes. you? Yes. Yeah. And they ban you from Target for life. And like. Yeah. You just can't be banned And from they have Target. like a whole actual security room. Like yeah. Target and Walmart don't steal from them. They got me um, real I would do a full Heidi Montag style surgery transformation. Target's the only place I've ever gotten like caught up stealing at. Like it was bad. Um. So you'd find the grocery store with no, a no chase policy, right? Ours was food for less on Valley Verde in Las Vegas. Oh, love um, it. And it's so funny too. You're robbing food for, for less. For less. <laughs> Still couldn't afford the less. It's like when Lila used to go in and like fucking sweep Goodwill. Not like, kidding you. I could tell you to this day where the alcohol is in that store. <laughs> so you walk in with a cart and you fill the cart like you're grocery shopping. Like you take your fucking time. Oh, Fawn does that. Yeah and, yeah, and then you just run out of the store. She's with the, the OG cart, cart runner. Yeah, fun started that. Seriously, yep. it's real. We did that because the second that. you get through those golden gates, <laughs> the doors, you're fine, and you just leave with your entire cart of food. It was always like the be- like. The thing is, though, you know what I. I've had times where I'm like at the grocery store and I'll see someone like stuffing their backpack, but it's like if you're stealing food, you need it. Like. Yeah. yeah you know what i mean like you can't really get on someone for stealing food. and it's like these are billion dollar corporations it's like fuck you you can spare some fucking exactly, yeah, like, exactly. i've always said never like, steal from a small business even though i definitely did when i was horrible back in the day but like now like i understand that's immoral yeah but like i, I yeah i would rob a store if i would like if i didn't have the money cart like, runs were like the best like for like spring break prep it was like oh okay oh, we're going yeah. we're going to newport baby we're coming with like fucking 13 handles of smirnoff have and I no one's paying the story of me getting caught stealing from pack sun I think so. On this podcast, I probably didn't have, you work actually. there? I ended up getting hired by the person who we worked there at the same time. How big is Cody? Is that? And did like, she know or no? Yeah, fully knew. Oh, wait. She, well, she probably really like trusted you after that. She's we worked like, there oh, at the we've same been time. A lot together. And never were allowed to like work together. Like we never had a shift together because obviously I've had so like, many that friends like that because I just can't behave myself. Good. And so. she would get fired every year on Black Friday. And I'd be like, Dana, like, you know, it's Black Friday. And honestly, I was like excited because I was like, oh my God, Black Friday. We're, we're going to finally get year. to work together. Well, she because got, they would tell me I have to work a Black Friday shift. And I would be like, no, I'm going out stealing. Mama's busy. Like, you know, <laughs> and they'd fire me and then just rehire me. I'd be working so and like. Weird. They're like, where's Tana? Like, we know it's your bestie. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I was literally at her house earlier in the day. Like, I just know she's not coming to work. And then also, like, I'm, like, outside, like, greeting people as they enter the store. And I see her, like, ducking and dodging, running, Ugh, like, I can never store to retail. store, like, well, bags. And then I would hook up with my shift manager so that I could pick my shifts. She sure did. Genius. He was, I'm not kidding. I think he was 25 and I was 16. Not Horrible. genius. Shout not out, genius. Ray. Not resourceful. <laughs> not at all. But I, I'm not kidding. I, he would put me up on the counter by the okay. cash register. Okay, sorry. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so funny because she would tell me the stories about this. And I'm like, this was happening like in our store. Like We got caught You're like leaned up against that well. counter. <laughs> I'm like folding t-shirts and fuck. Like, <laughs> like, I'm at work folding t-shirts. You're at work getting fucked. What? I don't know. Are we working in the same store? Like, he was honestly so hot, Miss him. Kidding. Well, but, that has been. This has been so fun. Yep. Um. This has been an episode. Brooke, you have been on fire the entire time. You're the funniest person oh, I've ever God, met. Thank you. And I love you so, so, so dearly. And I'm happy to be back on this couch unpacking trauma and life. Love you so much, Amari. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, that was yeah, so random. Ate. That was so random. No, I just randomly joined, ate, but though. I love you guys. <laughs> we love you. Goodbye. <laughs>